This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Well, I think the judging will go well, uh, only because I think that they're going to have fun with our game. Um, it's, you know, it's impossible to tell because we've never met these people, uh, but I'm confident. I mean, we've learned a lot, and I, I think it'll be fun to show them our game. Uh, I'm not quite as bullish as Kim is. I, I, <laughs> I think it'll be interesting to see what, it, what their reaction is, you know, whenever you do something that's, you know, a little bit more freeform. I mean, ultimately it comes down to sort of player taste and what they like and they dislike, and, um, you know, we re went out of our way to be mechanic light to really let the story bubble to the top, and depending on sort of a judge's preference and maybe seen as being a little too, you know, not too mechanic driven, which is in the intent, but we'll see. Thank you so much for coming to show us The Siblings Trouble. Can you guys give us the really brief pitch for the game? Sure. Um, the Siblings Trouble is a two to four player cooperative storytelling game that's driven with cards and dice. And it's an adventure in the sort of backyard of your house as a child, sort of Miyazaki Goonies, sort of mundane, magical to be. Well, let me introduce you to our panel of Goonies who will be playing your game today. To my left, we have Paul Peterson, creator of Smash Up and Guillotine, Annalisa Delfal, the retail manager of Card Kingdom. Rodney Thompson, creator of Lords of Waterdeep. Mike Selinker, creator of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Luke Crane, creator of Mouse Guard and Burning Wheel. And Sherry Spiro, founder and president of Ad Magic. Can you guys uh, come and show us the game and uh, get set up with us? Sure, sure. thank you. All right, let's do it. The prototype looks really cool. Can you guys um, talk to us a little bit about the graphic design process and the prototyping process and just getting the game to this point? We started about six months ago. You know, with the idea of this being a storytelling game, I always had it in my mind that it should come in a storybook box. And as far as the card design, we've gone through several iterations. We've also worked with another guy named Adam Dix who created our characters and part of the artwork on the cards. Just from what we've seen so far, I really love the, the art direction and the components look really nice. So I'm gonna uh, step away and I'll let you um, run a few rounds for the judges. This is The Sibling's Trouble. Like all great stories from your childhood, it starts at home. We have danger, mayhem, adventure, and mischief. The typical family. Typical family. <laughs> Actually, the middle names of two of my, my kids. A lot. Yeah, really. Danger's my middle name. Yeah. <laughs> no. I actually think adventure's cooler, but nevertheless, you know, it starts sort of mom and dad are at home, and the, the, the team slips out, or the, the brothers and sisters slip out into the forest of the backyard to go on this adventure. And everyone's going to start with one item in their pack. And the first thing we do in the game is describe why you're bringing this item with you on the adventure. It's sort of like a opener to storytelling in a nice lightweight fashion. The game itself looked wonderful and they were really adept at showing us how to play it and getting us into the game right away. I didn't see really any flaws with uh, bringing this game out to some strangers and teaching them how to play it. Who sure. wants to be who? Doesn't matter, just hand them out. We'll be, uh, we'll be adventure. I see, some people does It matter. does matter. I gotta take Danger's my middle name here. <laughs> Come on, how can I not? Rodney oh. Danger. Mm. Mm. Where have I heard I'm that before? Each your Sweet. fabulous color coordinated oh, die. Awesome. I have braces. <laughs> you better believe it. I especially like games that have a bit of humor in them, and this is clearly with the names of the siblings like Mayhem and Mischief, that it just starts at a place that's that's kind of humorous, and you start giving them, you know, toys and things to to have an adventure with. So I thought all of that was really good. Well, I guess we'll start with, with Mayhem. All right. And you look at your item, and yep. you sort of set up the story, and we go around, and then you'll also draw the entrance card. We were at home, and we wanted to leave. So um, what we did was we very carefully knocked the vase over and blamed it on mischief. And while Mom and Dad were taking care of the situation, we just got out of there. So This happens all the time. Oh, <laughs> is there a problem, Miss Jeff? I can't keep piecing together vases. <laughs> um, but on the way out, I realized that somebody might need a whooping, so I brought a garden hose. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> is that what you do with a garden hose? Well, it, 
We, we were gonna bring it along in case we needed some water, but This game's pretty awesome. I mean, I, I think that uh, a lot of people are gonna like it. Uh, I don't think it's for kids. I think it's for people who want to enjoy pretending to be kids, which is great. I brought along a pocket knife because I'm dangerous. <laughs> he, can, he can use it to cut our, our hose into lengths. Proper whipping length. <laughs> yeah. Lord. This has turned dark in a hurry, I have to tell you. I think the game has a pretty great idea behind it, like the, the story and the narrative, the theme, the kids going out on adventures, Goonies, Super 8, that kind of thing. That's perfect. Don't touch that at all. All right, so I'm searching this dark alcove, uh, looking to see what's in there when there is a Scottish sounding grumble and a dwarf miner appears. So I rolled a three, he's got a four, star rating of four, so I either have the option of using food in my story to get the plus one or use my pocket knife in some way. I was really excited when they busted out the sibling's trouble. Uh, the components looked great, the concept sounded uh, engaging, it sounded in my wheelhouse, uh, but as we, uh, as we played just even half a turn, I was you know, it was like needle scratch for me. <laughs> uh, so as I peer into the alcove and see this dwarf miner, the dwarf miner doesn't see me. But in order to uh, keep us from being prevented from going deeper into this cave, uh, I uh, reach into my pack and pull out a baby Ruth, <laughs> which I unwrap, and its sensitive dwarven nose can smell the chocolate, I guess. And what I do is I huck that deeper into the alcove, and uh, as he bends over to pick it up and examine it, we're all going to sneak by behind, and that way he won't raise the alarm. Drax! <laughs> Footprints. They look like they are some sort of animal. Footprints. Dog, dog, dog. That's an incredibly large dog. Anytime that the players uh, are in injecting their own ad lib or impro improvisation to make your game fun, I'm immediately suspicious of it. All right, that's no dog. No? <laughs> it's a troll. It's a troll dog. A handsome troll. A, troll dog. a handsome. A very, very handsome troll. Just saying. Quick run. I throw, um, we, we, I throw our superhero cape over the troll. Before you do, you should, you need to roll your, 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 that die in your hand. Okay. Uh, right. So I need the superhero cape. I'm sorry, what is the star bonus here? Uh, Plus three so stars. He gets, if he uses oh, that cape the in the story, he gets that win. And he used it. And we yep. used to it. Throw it over his face. Run! Troll! Holy cats, did you see that troll? Oh, I thought he was handsome, but we're running away anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the interest level of this game at the moment mostly comes from the interesting stories you can make up yourself, so the burden falls on the player, which is fine for a lot of games, but because it already has simple mechanics in it, you want those mechanics to also shine uh, as well as the storytelling. A lot of this game is, has been a process of stripping mechanics out of it. It's really mechanical light, and any time there was a mechanic that was too onerous or complicated or multi confusing. confusing, not even confusing, just any time somebody had to be like, well, what am I going to do with the, it, it dropped the story on the ground. And so a lot of this is just, just enough so that there's some drama, but not enough that it becomes a matter of playing a game as opposed to story and telling the story. Is there anything that ramps up the tension or ramps up the sort of, later game state, or is every card pretty much the same until you get to one of the two game ending states? At the end you have your treasure, you have the boss, which is the hardest. Oh, right. And then we have only one path, and, and, and just between the, the second to last and the boss. So as you get into the end, you have less items and a much harder battle, so that the end of the deck is a bit harder, but that's about all there is in terms of sort of making the end a little bit more difficult. One of the problems I have with the game is that the mechanics are very static. There's really only a single number and a single die roll, and there are no additional effects that happen or interesting things that happen beyond simply rolling the die and checking to see whether the number is correct. I think this game could really benefit from just a few extra mechanics, like making effects like sleep or something like that, which would have an effect and make you discard a card even, something as minor as that, could really go a long way towards creating more interest in this game. Yeah, there's gotta be a little bit more to it. I mean, um, there's, when we designed the Pathfinder Adventure card game, there there were all sorts of elements in the game that, that caused the game to be more dramatic and more 
uh, tense, and, and they don't really have that. They, they don't shouldn't use the way I went, but they should do something. Uh, the game looks awesome, guys. I just have one, one final question for you. Who do you guys see as the main audience for the game? Is it, is it primarily a kid's game? Is it meant for adults who are gamers, or is it something that everyone can kind of play together? I, I like to say that it's not for kids, it's for bringing out the kid in you. And the, the target audience in terms of how we put it together is really people who haven't had experience doing storytelling games. It is great with families and I do play it with my kids and my kids are six and four and they love it. But also we had a, a group of um, four hardcore role players uh, and they awesome. had a blast with it. And so I think it, it's a wide spectrum, but it's, it's fast paced. It's again, 20 or 30 minutes of storytelling and then go off and do something else. It's not, it's not a heavy experience at all. I think a game that's directed at a family audience definitely uh, is treading on dangerous waters uh, because you can sort of just shoehorn this game in and kids are fickle and they're not always going to want to play something over and over again. The person you want to design this for is a young adult who's interested in story games, who's interested in role-playing games. Draw them in and don't worry about kids, right? In fact, that was something kind of concerning about the playtesting that he mentioned. Most of it sounded like it was being done with kids. You need to get out there and you need to find your target audience and you need to get them to play the game because if you don't, you're never going to identify the places where you can improve it for that audience. Well, thank you guys so much for showing us the game. We're going to hang on to your prototype for a second and kick you guys out and into the hallway and uh, we're going to uh, have a talk about it. Awesome. awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I thought it went all right. I think it went great. They yeah. were super nice, receptive. I think they asked some awesome questions. Yeah, it was nice to have sort of, you know, because we did the other play tests and where people just play, but it was nice to sort of have the dialogue. I mean, I think it inhi inhibited the storytelling aspect because they were asking questions while playing a character, but um, it was fun to hear the questions that they had. Last year, for the first tabletop deathmatch, we got one million submissions that were smash up. And this year, we got a million games that were Pathfinder Adventure card game, <laughs> but simpler. And this was the one that, that kind of stood out from the pack as like a light role-playing game made with primarily with playing cards. What did you guys think? Well, first off, I think we should expect that next year we will get a million Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Right. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. You, know, my warlock. I, you know what kids like? Kids like fun games, like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh. You know what those games are? Not simple. So, uh, you know, you're some sort of story guy. And this yeah. was an opportunity for me to crawl on my knees and stare at the giant dog troll, right? I mean, like... I don't need this, this game to tell that story. Because you have 15 games like it in your house. No, I don't need any games to tell that story. Like, I, I need you, a game to but, tell me a story. But, I need a game to make me tell a story I wouldn't otherwise normally but tell. But you don't because you play complex and, and, and mind-expanding storytelling games. Fucking Luke Crane, man. I mean, look, he's the goddamn story guy, right? And I know that he spends all of his time trying to invent these sweeping landscapes that people can find their way through. And, and you know, you want to give, you want to make sure that people have all the cues necessary to you lay in 50 page rule books of sweeping story and setting and stuff like that. Screw it. This game, this game is fun. I mean, you sit down and you say, I want to be this kid. I, did he think I was faking it? I think it's really strong. I, I, uh, I wanted to keep playing it. My, my only real concern is that I'm not sure any card is different than any right. other card. That's my biggest concern is that even though it's more complicated than once upon a time in having the dice and having these things, they're all the same. They're all doing the same thing. It's a standard number. You're adding some things. Once upon a time is elegant, right? Sure. This is sure. this has uh, additional layers to it that don't really add anything. But neither Paul or I are saying it's better than Once Upon a Time. Right. It's just what we what we can compare it to but easily. But I'm now speaking for you. <laughs> I think we would play it. Um, I actually I might push the the mechanics just a tiny bit further so that there is a little bit more game here because there's not a lot of game. It's all it's all storytelling, right? And that's fine. But I think the combination of light mechanics and then a theme that I, I'll just be honest, I find this enchanting. I, I can see this being a hit. If I've got any advice on how to fix it, is look at your mechanics and see if there's ways that you can make things more narratively interconnected. I think there's a lot of places where you've got a cool idea for this thing should be used in a certain way. You can use this to tell this kind of story, but it's not quite following through. The idea that the flashlight just gives you an extra turn, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So really take a look at the specific content in your game and ask yourself if there's ways that you can draw lines between this card and that card, or this concept and that concept. Because interconnectivity 
creativity is really, really huge for helping people tell a story. For, for a good story, you want to have a clear beginning, middle, and end, and then you want to have the escalation and the release of tension. And it seems like a lot of what you guys were, were drawing from the deck, it was just kind of a pretty consistent list of cards. It's really hard to make a, a storytelling light game uh, ramp up in difficulty, or sorry, difficulty and tension without having some external source of tension. So in the Pathfinder game, the Blessings deck timing down on you means that you go from, hey, it's totally fine, we can just look around for a while, to we better get our act together quickly, right? And there really isn't anything in here that has that effect. They almost sort of described it as if, you know, the, it's just something that happens at the end. And if I know in my head that, it's, that just something important is gonna happen at the end, then yeah, I'm, I'm building for that. I know it's there, but the intervening steps aren't necessarily all that exciting. Narrative fiction has rules, it has high level meta rules to it. And one of the rules of narrative fiction uh, is about failure. Everything in a narrative has to go wrong to start. Everything, it has to be disaster after setback after obstacle. This creates tension, this uh, teaches us about the characters, and it builds us up to the ultimate success when they, you know, eventually our heroes overcome. The really interesting thing here is the addition of the die, because I think that like so many RPGs use dice, like it's, this is like a step from once upon a time to actually role playing because it'll get them used to picking up dice and rolling them, which I think has a place. There, there could be an addition to this game of some source of external tension, some, some deck that that puts complications out, that would probably give it that tension. Again, sometimes we're talking about just getting a game from a, a seven to a nine or whatever out of 10. It's, it's that kind of thing that'll get it there. All the stuff we're talking about, adding tension and mechanisms, stuff like that, that doesn't have to be at cross purposes with storytelling either, right? right. Like yep. conflict and tension breed a good story. Without failure, you have a boring story. And so this game had no failure, no setbacks, no obstacles in it, uh, aside from, you know, you were sent home and then you get to describe how you get out of home and, and you're right back in the game. So the, the interest level in this game is, you know, gonna start high and just drop rapidly. So you guys know when they, when they, uh, you're gonna talk about your game and they say, come join us or something, walk straight. <laughs> yeah, we went Like, left. walk through <laughs> the equipment. <laughs> we walk to the side and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> they're gonna walk around the side like normal people don't. But it's not okay. live. It's not live. <laughs> Let's talk about production um, quickly. So it looks like there's a manageable amount of playing cards here. Um, these tokens, which could probably be done out of out of chipboard, uh, like punch outs. It seems like the thing that, that is most uh, concerning is just the custom dice and then this this really cool box. You know, I, I don't know if they'd go for this, but the most affordable way to do the box would be just to print it to look like that, like we did with Story War. I love that. You can't really, you know, when people pick up Story War, they try to open it, you know, like it's a book, and it really is just a two-part box. So, I mean, that's an affordable way to do it. Or we could do a, a really neat box like that. We could actually make that, but not out of wood, though. You know, out of, a, out of just a chipboard. The way this game is manufactured now, um, for the prototype, it's got stickers on dice. And each of the dice is a D6 with one varying side. So I think that overall the manufacturer would not be too bad screening them and then customizing one side each of the four die. Don't you imagine that, that if this was a Kickstarter campaign, right, that there would be a, a $150 version of the game that comes in exactly that box. I, I'd, pay, I'd pay an extra $5 for a box like that, or 10 or whatever. You'd pay an extra $5 at manufacturing, but you'd pay an extra $25 for that box. I don't know that I'd get and that I'm fine that. with that box as long as it actually stands somehow. Yeah. What do we think about the name? It's tough to say. I find it hard to remember. Yeah. The Siblings Trouble is a horrible name and nobody can remember it. If there's anything that would improve that title, anything that would make it a little bit, you know, catchier or more relevant to the game, I would go with that. Cool. Well, let's get them back in here and tell them what we think. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming to show us The Siblings Trouble. Thanks, Max. I really enjoyed the storytelling aspects of this game, and I think it would demo really well in a store. We also really appreciated the way that you used some light mechanics, especially the die, to sort of bring people out of their shell and introducing them to a storytelling game. 
We didn't feel there were enough mechanics in the game to promote tension. It felt like each card flipping over was a little bit the same as every other card. We think that could use some attention. And while we feel the core concept of the game is strong, we feel the rules in general are underdeveloped and could benefit from playtesting and revision. Thank you guys very much. We'll see you back for final judging. Thank you guys. Thank you. Their, their comments, I think, were mostly positive. Some things we actually knew, I think, that we were already talking about, little tweaks here and there, but overall I think it was, it was good. Again, the feedback was around sort of rule refinement. And, and I think one of the places that I have mixed feelings about, which is adding more tension and, and, and dice rolling, or so essentially adding more variations and risks to play. And I think there's a balance between creating something that feels too gamey and something that still has that levity and you know that can Yeah, you want it to be fun and just enough of a challenge. Yeah, that's sort of a the more game designery you are, the more you you need that. But I find the more the average person you are, the less you need that. But I, I don't think it was bad at all. It was yeah. nice, short and to the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm.